Well, hello guys and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Uh, this is actually a game I, did, I didn't know about at all. And, uh, um, well, in the comments of the video I posted yesterday about 1.31 in War Thunder, uh, I read a couple of references to uh, this game. And uh, anything that has a space program attached to it actually raises my interest. So I actually did a couple of searches in internet about this game and I found that it is, I don't know exactly, I mean I only have had an overview of it and um, it says that it is like a space program in a planet called uh, Curve and um, with little Kerbys running around I have given a try to uh, the first couple of um, missions, well, training missions, which are basically about uh, building your own spacecraft and then actually launching it and controlling it in fly. And uh, the next one, which is available, is going to be orbiting. And this is actually pretty cool because what says here is that this training scenario covers the basic of flying a spacecraft in, in orbit. Essential main maneuvers like raising and lowering apoapsis and periapsis nodes, and also important concepts such as what the term apoapsis and periapsis means. Basically, these are the highest and lowest point in an orbit, I'm guessing. Uh, you'll start off in a low circular orbit around Kerbin, with the Orbiter 1 training craft ready to go. So, I'm going to give this a go for the first time live. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to mess this up a lot or not. So well, let's get started and see how this goes. Uh, how do I do? Okay, so welcome to Orbiting 101 training program. I'm Jim Kerman <laughs> and I'm going to teach you the basics of orbiting. I'm I assume you have done the basic flight tutorials and now ready to learn how to get around in space. If you haven't done them, I have, so whatever. Let's get started. Orbiting is really nothing more than free falling. The only thing is that as you fall, you are lo uh, you are moving so fast forward, you actually miss the ground. Well, it's a way to look at it. But well, okay. Uh, because up there, there is no atmosphere to slow you down, you will continue to free fall endlessly around the planet without having to use your engines. We are currently in a low, almost circular orbit. Let's take a look. Yep, uh, circular orbit around Kerbin. To get a better view of your situation, press the M key to go into the map key. So let's do that. Oh, cool! This is the planet, and then this is the orbit. I'm guessing. So this is the plane. The uh, well, I was going to say the plane. Okay, it's not a plane. It's a spacecraft. Whatever. Uh, this is the map view. Here you can see your sis position and its current trajectory around the planet. Use the mouse to look around to see the orbit from various angles. Okay, so how do I translate to... I mean, I can circle, but I can't actually pan the camera to the left or to the right. I'm guessing... I don't know. I? No. <laughs> Stupidity! What the hell is this? <laughs> Look at this! This uh, is design of the pilots, I guess. Correct stupidity. <laughs> oh well, these two ranks would do so well in a World of Tanks game. <laughs> I'll go. Okay, uh, I don't know how to pan the camera. Okay, I'm missing. I don't need to. Let's zoom in. I can't actually zoom into the. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, also, hovering uh, over the icons of the map will display more information about them. Kelvin periapsis. Oh, this seems like the time to go to reach it. Yeah, and the distance from the surface, which is 25 km, uh, 225 kilometers here and 74 kilometers here, almost 75. Okay. Close the map where you're ready, <coughs> so we can proceed. Okay. Uh, good, let's practic get practical now. I trust you already know your basic spacefare controls. Up here, they are very much the same, only that the lack of an atmosphere makes the ship behave quite a bit differently. 
I actually shouldn't have problems with this. I mean, I, I played Orbiter a long way back, so yeah. Let's see. Because there's no drag slowing you down for every input you apply, you'll have to apply an opposite one to, the, to come to a stop again. Well, yes, he's saying that there's no atmosphere, so if you try to put pits up, you have then to pitch down, otherwise the movement won't ever stop. Yeah. I'm going to remotely nudge your attitude uh, controls a little. Try to get the seat backward under control afterwards. If you find yourself totally out of control, so hit T to toggle the SAS on. T is something that stabilizes your your plane uh, your craft uh, um, automatically. Uh, so it's going to spin the thing around. Well, all right. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Here we go. Uh, okay, this is... I have seen this in NASA training. Um, you have to stabilize... I am actually not pressing any controls now. You have to actually <coughs> stabilize your um, graft on 3D and the way to go is to focus on one of the dimensions at a time. One, so, pitch first, yo later and finally roll. So, let's do that. I'm actually not pitching uh, down a lot. I'm looking here. So, I'm going to stop the roll. Okay, there you go. And now I'm going to try to stop the yo. There you go. And now stop the roll a bit. Bring the nose up and stop it. Yeah, not hard. And let's put it, I guess this is the speed vector or something like that. Alrighty, there's some. Oh, a good or what? Uh, actually, uh, attitude control is an essential skill for a spacecraft pilot. Master it and you'll be well on your way to becoming an spectral commander. You can try this again if you want or play next if you're ready to move again. I want to try it again. Let's go. So, there we go. Again, it's mostly rolling. Not a lot of bits, so I'm going to stop the roll first. There. Okay, now pits. Stop the roll a bit. Okay, there. And now the yo. And bring it to a stop. Uh -huh. Ah ha ha. Okay, that, that's enough. Ready. Okay, now let's have a look at the nav ball. Nav ball is here. Uh, you'll probably see the symbols on it when you were spinning around. Here is what they mean. A uh, prograde vector, it points towards your velocity vector. That is, it's pointing so where you are going. Retrograde vector, it points directly away from your velocity, okay? Uh, prograde waypoint vector, is it points towards your current waypoint. Retrograde waypoint, it points away from your current waypoint, okay? Now let's try something a little bit. Oh, now let's try something a little bit more involved. Open your map again. That was M. Uh, what we are to do now is to go through some of the most basic maneuvers you'll need to know. Let's try raising your apoapsis first. Apoapsis is the farther side. No. Yeah. Apoapsis is the highest point in an orbit. Yeah. And it's indicated by the node marker A. Which I'm guessing is on the other side. Yeah, there is. Yeah, we saw it. We saw that before. The best place to raise your apoapsis is the periapsis. Yeah, uh, in orbital maneuvers, basically, if you want to change where are you going to, you want to do it in the opposite part. So if you want to raise your lower part, you want to do it in the higher part, and if you want to raise your higher part, you want to do it in the lower part. Uh, that's for the centrical or uh, orbits. Uh, if it's mm, absolutely uh, circular around a planet, you can do basically anywhere. The best place to raise your apoapsis is the periapsis, yeah, that's what I'm saying, uh, which is the lowest point of your orbit. If you hover the mouse over the periapsis node, which I'm doing now, you'll see that we'll reach the node in a few minutes, two minutes and a half more or less, okay? Once there, we will face progress and burn. Press period to speed up little, uh, time a little so we can get that faster, period. Okay, now time is passing ta five times faster than normal. We should be there in a few moments. You can control time warp with the period and comma keys or click the arrows on the panel. Well, commas, keys I'm going to use. At this time, I'll put us back on normal yeah, in time just before we reach periaps. Okay, cool. Out of training though, you... Well, whatever. I don't know what he was saying. 
We are a few seconds away from periapsis, yeah, one minute away. Time to throw progress and do our bound. However, instead of closing the map, let's bring the navbar here so we can see what's happening to our orbit as we accelerate. To read the navbar of the map, click the little tab of the here. Yeah. Good, time to do our bound. Turn the ship to face the progress ve vector now. Turn SAS on. Uh, if you need help maintaining stability, remember the progress vector looks like this. Make sure the city is pointed forward before accelerating. Uh, it's here. So let's roll a bit. Add a little bit of yo. Stop it. Nose down. What the hell? What's. Uh, okay, we are not through the program. Uh, ah, okay, he has put the stabilizer on. Okay, that was why I wasn't being able to, to maneuver it. Go ahead and throw up now. Roger, Roger! Notice how the opposite side of your orbit starts to rise as you accelerate. Yeah, it does. Keep turning progress until your apoasis attitude reaches around 8,000 or 800,000 meters. Alrighty. We are at 600,000 now. Righty, righty. We are almost there. Going to put a little bit of throttle and good in. Well done. This is how you raise your apoasis node. With orbital maneuvers, pretty much everything you do will affect the opposite direction of your orbit. Yeah, I know that. So, to raise the highest point, apoapsis, you thrust forward or prograde at the lowest point, periapsis. Similarly, to raise your periapsis, you thrust prograde at apoapsis. We're on our, do our way to the apoapsis now, so let's do just that. Press net when ready, and I'll warp on time to get, get us there quickly. Alright, so he did that for me. We are on our way to the apoapsis node now. Notice how your speed. Let me see. Let's see. Yeah, loses speed. Is actually doing so. That's because we are climbing away from the planet, so that we lose speed as we, we go higher. Just as you would if you were climbing a hill back here on Kerbin. The higher you are, the slower your orbit will be. Notice how the moon's orbital speed is around 540 meters seconds, while yours is far higher. When we reach apoapsis, we will burn progress again to raise the periapsis node and synchronize our orbit. Okay. So we have to do exactly the same, I'm guessing. Um, but I don't know. I mean, if we were pointing forwards here, we will be pointing backwards here. So I have to turn. Turn. Oh, okay. I have to switch this off. Alrighty. Well, instead of doing very complicated things, I'm going to stabilize it here and just go around until I'm facing the other side. And stop it. Oh, good. I'm good. Okay, it's rolling a bit. Well, if it did, I'm going to do it as well. I engaged myself the, the stabilizer. And we have to make a burn until we circulate it. So it has to be um, eight, 800 kilometers. Okay, so let's burn. Ah, oh, we are giving here the. Details. Okay. So full power forward. How much? Ah, okay, I have enough. I mean, this these are your resources here. Is the fuel you have left? And of course, you don't want to run out of fuel. So. Alrighty, 500 kilometers. And going to slow down a bit. There you go. I think we are there. Well, it's not perfectly circular, but I guess it will do. Uh, nicely done. This is how you change the size of your orbit. This maneuver should come in handy in many situations. Next, we'll look into changing our, or our orbital inclination. Plus next, when you are ready to proceed. Orbital inclination, I'm guessing that we will tilt the orbit up and down. Your orbital inclination is the angle your orbit makes to Kerbin's equator. If you are, you have managed to maintain a reasonable amount of control this far, you should, we should still be in a nearly zero inclination orbit. 
which seems we are. Uh, that is, even though, even though we have changed the altitude of our orbit, it still has the same inclination as before. Changing inclination is done by thrusting in, in 90 degrees angles to your progress vector, but without changing your pitch relative to the surface. Yeah, well, makes sense. On um, our present nearly equatorial orbit, progress is due east. What? This means to increase our inclination so that our orbit takes us into high latitude, we have to burn towards the north. What the hell is east or north if we are in the space? Let's try the note so the ship towards heading through 360 and up the sorry, and up the throttle. I mean, this makes no sense. We are in the space, there's no north and, and, and south. What the hell? <coughs> okay, I have a heading here, but this, I mean, which way I'm pointed at? Okay, let's see. Where is the. Wow, we are high. Alright, so. And we are moving. This is the prograde vector. So we are moving forward along our orbit. If we want to change the orbit, and we are moving this way, which is what we were doing. I mean, we are moving towards our right. Yeah. Uh, so I have to go upwards. Directly, I was I'm born that way. I'm guessing. So let's do that. Let's stabilize this sort off. Okay, and roll a bit to give it the proper attitude to yo. There you go. And now yo upwards. Alrighty. And uh, more or less here, I'm guessing. Oh yeah, it's saying that is almost. Look at this, three three sixty degrees almost. But makes no sense because there's no the direction of north and south in the space, so uh, it's a little bit confusing. Okay, let's stabilize it. Go back to map. Um, burn. Notice how as you burn north, north, your orbit starts to tilt up. Yeah, it does. But the periapsis and the apoapsis node remain mostly the same. Uh, that is because we are accelerating in a completely new direction, so this maneuver doesn't add or take away any energy from the orbit. Actually, it's doing a little bit of that, but whatever. Keep accelerating north until... Oh, oh, oh inclination is 10 degrees, I'm almost there. Okay. Whew, I almost missed it. Good, this is how you change your orbital inclination. For these maneuvers, it's always better to do it in the slowest part of the orbit, so you can change your... Sp have to spend as much delta B to turn your orbit around. That also means inclination change of larger orbits, such as we are now, takes less fuel than the same inclination change on the lower one. Makes sense. Also, keep in mind that changing inclination doesn't necess necessarily mean accelerating to the north or the south. It means accelerating on a 90 degree heading to your progress vector, which is what we did, which on our nearly equatorial orbit also happens to be towards the north. But what the hell is north in an orbit? Come on! <laughs> I mean, on the surface it makes sense, but whatever. Next, let's look into the last essential maneuver you'll need to learn. Lowering your orbit. I'm guessing you will have to um, point backwards. As you can imagine, your lowering your orb uh, orbit's attitude is altitude is very much like raising it only in reverse. Because there's no air up there, we can use our main engines to decelerate as well as accelerate. Because nothing says we have to be facing some direction or another. Um, yeah. Well. Also, since your orbit is nearly circular, we can just turn retrograde and do our burn at any time now. So let's get to it. Yeah, it makes sense because. And also, we are very close to the periapsis. I mean, if this was a highly centrical orbit, we would have to wait until we were in the apoapsis. But as it's very um, circular, it doesn't really matter. Uh, turn towards the retrograde vector and start those sensings up again. How much fuel do I have? Ah, more than enough. Okay. So, back to the ball. Ah, the stabilizer. 
Okay, and let's turn the ship. We are almost there. Compensate, bring it there, and I actually want it to be closer. A little bit more closer. Engage stabilizer and let's burn. Keep burning retrograde on the, the periapsis altitude is around 3000 meters. Well, uh, 13 kilometers. Uh, try getting it uh, as close as possible this time. If you overshoot and get to uh, low, to progress and throw it again. Periapsis altitude, well, it's not changing. Oh shit! Because it totally uh, fucked up. Okay, I'm actually doing it wrong. I had to point the other way. Oh, I'm such an oof. Okay, let's do it again. I really hope we have fuel for this. Because otherwise, we won't be able to bring the ship down. And that would be a huge fail. Ah, oh, I'm such an oof. Okay. Yep. Bring it to the point. There. There, there, there. Stabilize. Actually, I want it a little bit uh, closer. Just a little bit of you. A little bit of you. Come on. There it is. And now, burn. That's it. How much fuel do I have? Oh, that's very few. It's going down very, very slowly. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. Come on. So we have to aim for exactly 30 kilometers. Alrighty. Yeah, we are going to be able to do this barely, but we will. Um, such a move. Alright. Let's with this roll a bit. I don't want to miss a mark. A little bit more. There we are. That's it. You're now on your way back. 30 kilometers is low enough to be in the atmosphere. So you are now on a re-entry course on Kelvin Cool. Once we are below six, uh, 60 kilometers, the atmosphere will start slowing the ship down so that it won't have enough velocity to ride back again. So the atmosphere is in Kelvin, whatever it is this planet, it's at 60 kilometers, it starts to be uh, strong enough to slow you down. Okay. This is the end of our lesson now. You can continue doing maneuvers on your own or you wait for periapsis and do a re-entry and land. Don't forget to decouple the capsule and deploy the parachutes. See you in the ground. Uh, oh sure. Let's let's do this. Let's land this this thing. So how much? Twenty eight okay, I'm going to accelerate this. So we are close. Seven, six, five, four, three. Oh, let's stop it. How high we are? And ninety kilometers. Okay, let's stop it at sixty or something like that. Yeah, it seems that it's happening because uh, the time warp is, is is stopping. Okay, I'm going to go to the capsule view. There you go. And I want to get rid of this thing, so I'm going to. Roll up. Oh, actually, roll up is the other way. And also, I have to quit this stabilization. Okay. Let's roll up. Stop it here. And this is in the stages, and I'm guessing this should get rid of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it did. So, we are on our way back. This is cool. I love this kind of games. I mean, back in the day I played uh, actually the Saddle Simulator, which was back in the mid-90s. And it came, uh, you had to go through the whole uh, complete 
um, checklist of the actual saddle pilots of the um, Columbia class um, saddles and that was insane I mean uh, half of the time I knew nothing of what I was doing and um, hey, I'm what I actually should be heading the other way hold on oh, oh, oh what the hell is this oh shit 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 this thing reacts fast okay I should head exactly the opposite way as the direction we are taking okay let's stop the roll like now it's impossible shit because you want to ent enter the atmosphere Sh oh 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 I'm totally out of control okay stop the roll stop the roll it's so twitchy I mean anything you do it super reacts the other way okay seems we are getting into control here stop it up down up oh so go help me uh, and oh we are already burning in this is the atmosphere friction okay I hope it establishes itself because I simply can't do anything with controls it reacts so quickly it's, it's insane Oh, we are going to die so much because we should be entering uh, bat first because this is the place mo it's it's most resistant to to aerodynamic uh, friction. But whatever, since we are doing fine, so cool, 26 kilometers. But well, the th the thing is that I actually uh, played uh, orbiter afterwards a long way afterwards. I mean, saddle is in from the early 90s and orbiter was uh, in the early 2000s and the one was very similar to this one in actually um, teaching you how to control I mean it was a, a lot more technical I mean, this is a little bit more for fun but yeah oh shit 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 come on there you go it's super twitchy already now now okay I don't care if we roll rolling is cool but we want to be with your faces, yeah, or asses first. By the way, this is cool. Uh, I mean, we were going in a completely different di direction and the friction of the atmosphere has totally changed our path. I don't know if you noticed it, that, but yeah. And yeah, now we are in the correct attitude. Well, how? Fif half, 500 kilometers per hour. Meters per second, okay, okay. So this is match 10. This is pretty quick. Um, and we are going down over what seems to be the ocean. Okay, we'll have a nice um, bath on the um, Kerbal uh, Sea. This is very cool. I mean, I, I love this kind of games. And um, I'm glad you guys pointed this out to me because I didn't know this one. And um, I mean it's pretty cheap. I have actually purchased it because I have read a lot of positive feedback for it. It's 23 euros, uh, but there's a free demo. So if you want to check it out, um, do so. I'm going to link the the page in the description below. And uh, I don't know exactly how much the, the demo includes, but well, I, I'm hooked into this thing. I mean it's pretty pretty fun. Okay, I'm going to deploy parachute at. 800 meters. There we go. And now we are on our way down to the ship. Ooh, what was that? Oh, the rest of the spaceship. Okay. So yeah, definitely, I'm I'm loving this. So thank you for those who pointed this this game to me. Uh, very very entertaining, very very fun. And uh, this was a pretty nice first try to orbital flight. And you saw me failing badly. <laughs> I didn't absolutely well. I almost ran out of fuel because I totally missed it. I was pointing the wrong, wrong way. But whatever. Um, I, I love this thing. I mean, uh, let's, let's check it again. The, the, the stupidity factor. Oh, you can't. Uh, shit. Ah, it was in the in the map. I want to see the stupidity stupidity factor again. And 
there we go safely back to the surface so well that's all for for it right now guys this is a hugely hugely amazing game again thank you for all of those who have pointed this out to me and well expect to see more of these uh, videos in the future because this is a very nice way to learn about space physics um, well that's all for now guys thank you very much for watching and see you later